Hello to all lovers of creepy places on our planet. Welcome to the Nightmare Stories channel. In today's video we will tell you 5 of the scariest real stories about haunted houses. Enjoy watching. The house at 805 Linden Street in Boys, Idaho is hard to miss. Covered in a layer of soot, with windows broken and boarded up and trash strewn about the yard, the two-story, 2,728-square-foot craftsman-style home looks like an abandoned horror movie set. The true story, however, is much scarier. Locals refer to it as the boys' murder house or even more eyebrow-raising. The Chop Chop House, which is a glib reference to the gruesome homicide that took place there more than three decades ago. According to many who have lived in the neighborhood or even rented out a room in the house itself, the basement, in particular, exudes some haunted energy. There have been reports of shadowy figures appearing and disappearing out of nowhere, strange liquid oozing down the walls, and more. Los Angeles is one of the best destinations for haunted house hunting, and this Bavarian-style home in Beverly Hills has a particularly gruesome history. In 1932, it was home to the iconic actress Jean Harlow and her abusive husband, Paul Byrne, who shot himself while standing in front of the mirror. Many suspected Byrne's ex-girlfriend, a suspicion exacerbated by her jumping off a boat to her death a couple of days later. Jean moved out after his death but died only a few years later at the age of 26. But wait it gets creepier. In 1963, celebrity hairstylist Jay Sebring bought the home and lived there with his girlfriend, Sharon Tate until she left him for Roman Polanski. They were still friends and remained so until both of them were murdered by the Charles Manson cult. Tate was the same age as Harlow when she passed. But back to when the couple lived in the Harlow house. Tate told several friends of creepy occurrences in the home and even mentioned it in interviews. For example, once, when she was sleeping in the master bedroom alone, she saw a creepy little man. Her friends say she believed it to be Paul Byrne's ghost. She was so freaked out when she saw the alleged ghost that she ran out of the room and then saw a hanging shadowy corpse. There are also stories about two other people dying in the swimming pool over the years. Located across from one of Savannah, Georgia's most famous and pristine squares Monterey Square in the city's historic district, the Mercer Williams House dates back to 1860. In 1970, famed preservationist and antiques dealer Jim Williams restored the home to its former glory after years of neglect. This Italianate revival played host to three untimely deaths, including that of 11-year-old Tommy Downs when he fell off the roof in 1969. The 1981 fatal shooting of Danny Hansford by Williams and Williams himself, when he died in the same room as Hansford less than a year after being acquitted of Hansford's death in a fourth trial. If the story sounds familiar, it's probably because you recognize it from the best-selling book Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Much like the rest of the city, the home was supposedly built right on top of unmarked graves. Rumors about the crime and ensuing ghost stories continue to swirl to this day. More cursed than haunted, downtown El S Hotel Cecil got such a bad rap that it actually changed its name to stay on Main. If you're a true crime and paranormal super fan, you've likely already heard of it. Where to begin? So many bad things have happened here there's literally an entire Wikipedia page dedicated to its violent history. The first recorded death is in 1931 followed by a long string of similar deaths in 1934 and 1940. At some point in the 30s, one man was pinned to the exterior wall by a truck. A woman murdered her newborn in the building in 1944, and the pattern of deaths continued into the 60s. In 1962, a woman jumped from the ninth floor window and landed on a pedestrian, killing them both. It's worth noting that two of the women who died apparently jumped while their husbands were asleep in the room. In 1964, Tenant Goldie Osgood was brutally murdered, a crime which has remained unsolved. Next, in the 80s, 
The infamous serial kill Richard Ramirez the Night Stalker stayed at the hotel and in 1990, Austrian serial killer Jack Unterwich lived there. Other weird things kept happening but the weirdest is definitely the disappearance and death of 21-year-old traveler Alyssa Lamb. A few weeks after Lamb went missing, her body was discovered in the rooftop water tank after visitors and tenants complained about a funky taste. They later found odd footage of her in the elevator from the night of her disappearance. It's difficult to make out what she's doing that looks like she's either playing hide-and-seek with someone outside the elevator or she's frightened and attempting to hide from someone but the doors won't seem to shut. Authorities ruled the death accidental drowning but because you need a key to access the roof, many a suspect foul play. Villa de Vecchi is forbidding, all right. Just consider that looming fog blanket. Located near Lake Como, Italy, the House of Witches dates back to 1857 when it was built as a summer house for Count Felix de Vecchi. The family was only able to spend a few years there, as their lives were mired in tragedy right after it was built. First, the architect died a year after construction. Then in 1862, Count de Vecchi came home to discover his wife murdered and his daughter missing. When he could not find her after a year of searching, he died. His brother then moved into the home and his family continued to live there until WW2. It's been vacant since the 1960, and an avalanche in 2002 wiped out all the houses in the area. Except this one. Spooky. Subscribe to our channel now for more hunting tales and bone-chilling stories. Turn on notifications to never miss a video from us. Don't forget to support us with a like and write any comment. It's not difficult for you, but it will help us a lot in promoting the channel.